August was a little more giving than the last two months when it comes to Lunar Mansion elections, but mostly just for the Aussies and New Zealanders. AET Time Zone has almost twice the elections of everybody else in August. Still, this month's guide features opportunities to make talismans for prosperity, abundance, love and friendship, strengthening buildings and projects, and expelling pests, among other things. So stay tuned for all of that in just a moment. Welcome to the August 2023 Lunar Mansion Guide. I'm Nate, and you're watching the Postmogalism channel. Thanks for checking out this month's guide. As usual, I'm going to go through all of the elections for each time zone, PST, EST, CET, and AET, before moving on to the next time zone. And you can use the links in the description below the video to skip ahead to the section that interests you. Before we get started with August, let me invite you to check out the array of talismans that my wife and I make together as part of our practice. We've been practicing talismanic magic intensely for a few years now and started producing talismans to sell a little under a year ago. In the time since, we've put together a nice little collection of traditional planetary talismans and lunar mansion talismans using my favorite elections from these monthly guides. Sarah engraves the gems for our talismans while I recite appropriate hymns and invocations and produce our other talismanic material like candles and oils and so on. Then we either set the gems ourselves or work with a local artisan for a little extra special setting. Right now we've got Jupiter in Pisces, Venus in Taurus, Mercury in Gemini, Sun in Aries, 28th Lunar Mansion, and 3rd Lunar Mansion talismans, and more. Check them out at sacredserpent.co. Now let's move on to the Lunar Mansion elections for August. The space weather in August is challenging for electional astrology, with Venus and Saturn retrograde because this renders Taurus, Libra, Capricorn, and Aquarius mansions unusable, and the Sun's presence in Leo means that the Moon will be combust in all three Leo mansions. Still, even with the limited territory, we've got a few strategic opportunities to work powerful magic in August. Before we go any further, please do me a favor and click like, and then subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Subscribe and then click that little bell icon to make sure that you get notified whenever I publish new videos like this one. And for other great content about magic, astrology, shamanism, and more, check out my website at www.postmogalism.com. This month, the best lunar mansion election is in the 13th lunar mansion, al Oa, which features a nice trine to Jupiter and Taurus. The moon is waxing, and this mansion is already extremely benefic and useful, so this is a great opportunity to boost the material gains that you'll receive from Jupiter's transit through Taurus. I'm personally very interested in the use of the 8th lunar mansion, al -Nathra, with the waning moon this month to create a talisman to drive away pests. The hot, wet summer has put us into a constant battle against the thriving insect population here in the Yucatan. So let's go through each time zone now and look at the elections that I've selected, starting with the Americas and then heading east from PST to EST, then to CET, and finally AET time zone. And again, you can skip ahead to the time zone that's closest to you using the links in the description below the video. But remember, regardless of where you live, you'll need to relocate the chart at least a little bit to make sure that it's valid for your specific location on Earth. There's a quick guide to relocating charts at the beginning of the March 2023 Lunar Mansion Guide video if you need help with that process. Now, let's take a look at the elections for August in the PST time zone. Despite the waning moon, I'm always excited for an election in the 7th Lunar Mansion, which is kind of an all-purpose, good-for-everything mansion, so long as what you're trying to accomplish is appropriately righteous in nature. It has essentially no malefic qualities, and therefore is usable under a waning moon for benefic purposes. The Picatrix says that it's good for the acquisition of good things, and specifically increasing merchandise, profit, and crops, traveling safely, causing friendship, or expelling flies, destroying officials, and causing kings and lords to be beneficial. The mansion's image is a man clothed in robes with his hands extended to heaven as if praying, and its spirit is Shaliel. There are two elections in PST on the 11th of the month, with the first one taking place at about 1.30 a.m. when the waning moon conjoins the ascendant and sextiles the north node from the seventh lunar mansion in Gemini. The second election is the better of the two because at around 9 a.m. it's at a much more reasonable time in the morning, and also because a trine to Saturn is added to the mix, which contributes some structure and longevity. 
Of course, Saturn is retrograde, so this may also slow and complicate the process a bit. The next day on the 12th, the moon moves into the 8th lunar mansion, Alnathra. Normally good for victory, and honestly, it's probably still pretty good for it. In this waning phase, the Picatrix mentions in Book 1, Chapter 4, the only malefic or protective quality of Alnathra, expelling mice and bugs, i.e. driving away pests. And this is what should be particularly active this month. The mansion's image is an eagle with the head of a man, and its spirit is Amnadiel. PST time zone has one election in the 8th lunar mansion, a little after 9.48 a.m. when the moon conjoins the midheaven in Cancer while sextile to both Mercury in its domicile in Virgo and Jupiter in Taurus. This isn't a perfect victory talisman, but it features two benefic aspects with a dignified Mercury and Jupiter in an Earth sign. These are both planets of luck and good fortune, so that's a big help when it comes to winning and presumably driving away pests too, I guess. Finally, the 17th has the best election of the month, with the now waxing moon in the 13th lunar mansion, al Awa, for love, sexual potency, abundance, and growth. This is a mansion for carnal love above all, but it is quite giving when it comes to prosperity and increase. The Picatrix in Book 1, Chapter 4 says that it is for the increase of trade and profit and harvests, good journeys, and to have good from nobles. And Book 4, Chapter 1 says that it is for the unbinding of men who are impotent, and to place love between two people. The image of the 13th lunar mansion is explicit, a man with an erect phallus, desiring to be in the act of love, and the mansion spirit is Jezariel. PST has one election at about 1.40 p.m. on the 17th, when the waxing moon in Virgo conjoins the midheaven and trines Jupiter in Taurus. Jupiter is all about growth and expansion, which pairs perfectly with the abundance of Jezariel in the 13th lunar mansion. Don't act like you're not impressed. Despite the waning moon, I'm always excited for an election in the 7th Lunar Mansion, which is kind of an all-purpose, good-for-everything mansion, so long as what you're trying to accomplish is appropriately righteous in nature. It has essentially no malefic qualities, and therefore is usable under a waning moon for benefic purposes. The Picatrix says that it's good for the acquisition of good things, and specifically increasing merchandise, profit and crops, traveling safely, causing friendship, expelling flies, destroying officials, and causing kings and lords to be beneficial. The mansion's image is a man clothed in robes with his hands extended to heaven as if praying, and its spirit is Shaliel. There are two elections in EST on the 11th of the month, with the first one taking place at about 1.15 a.m. when the waning moon conjoins the ascendant and sextiles Venus and the north node from the seventh lunar mansion in Gemini. The north node's ravenous energy lends a boost to the natural tendency of this mansion to answer righteous prayers, and the sextile to retrograde Venus just quietly smooths out some of Rahu's harsher vibes. The second election is at a much more accessible time in the morning, about 9 a.m., but it lacks the sextile to Venus. In both cases, there's enough juice here to warrant a talisman, but the early morning election is technically the better of the two. The next day on the 12th, the moon moves into the 8th lunar mansion, Alnathra. Normally good for victory, and honestly, it's still probably pretty good for that. In this waning phase, the Picatrix mentions in Book 1, Chapter 4, the only malefic or protective quality for Alnathra, expelling mice and bugs i.e. driving away pests. The mansion's image is an eagle with the head of a man, and the spirit is Amnadiel. EST time zone has two elections in the 8th lunar mansion. The first of the two occurs a little after 2 a.m. when the moon conjoins the ascendant in Cancer while trying Saturn in Pisces. Saturn's retrograde, so this isn't ideal for a victory talisman, but there's some watery alignment between Pisces and Cancer that has some synergy, and I think the restrictive nature of Saturn is particularly good for the purpose of driving away pests. And for the second election, just before 10 a.m., the moon conjoins the midheaven in Cancer while sextile to Jupiter in Taurus. And this isn't the perfect victory talisman, but it does feature a benefic aspect to Jupiter in an Earth sign. Jupiter brings material fortune, and that's a big help when it comes to winning. Of the two Alnathra elections, the earlier one is better for pest control, and the latter one is better for victory and success. Finally, the 17th has the best election of the month with the now waxing moon in the 13th lunar mansion al Awa for love, sexual potency, abundance, and growth. This is a mansion for carnal love above all, but it is also quite giving when it comes to prosperity and increase. The Picatrix in Book 1, Chapter 4 says that it is for the increase of trade and profit and harvests, good journeys, and to have good from nobles. And Book 4, Chapter 1 says that it is for the unbinding of men who are impotent and to place love between two people. The image of the 13th lunar mansion is explicit, a man with an erect phallus, 
desiring to be in the act of love. And the mentioned spirit is Jezreel. EST has one election at about 1.40 p.m. on the 17th, when the waxing moon in Virgo conjoins the midheaven and trines Jupiter in Taurus. Jupiter's all about growth and expansion, which pairs perfectly with the abundance of Jezreel in the 13th lunar mansion. Don't act like you're not impressed. Despite the waning moon, I'm always excited for an election in the 7th Lunar Mansion, which is kind of an all-purpose, good-for-everything mansion, so long as what you're trying to accomplish is appropriately righteous in nature. It has essentially no malefic qualities, and therefore is usable under a waning moon for benefic purposes. The Picatrix says that it's good for the acquisition of good things, and specifically, increasing merchandise, profit, and crops, traveling safely, causing friendship, for expelling flies, destroying officials, and causing kings and lords to be beneficial. The mansion's image is a man clothed in robes with his hands extended to heaven as if praying, and its spirit is Shaliel. There is one election in CET on the 11th of the month at 9 in the morning, when the waning moon conjoins the midheaven in Gemini and sextiles the ravenous north node. Gemini is ruled by Mercury, who is well positioned in their domicile and exaltation, boosting this talisman beyond the mild effects of a typical sextile and the good luck of its owner as well. The next day on the 12th, the moon moves into the 8th lunar mansion, Alnathra, normally good for victory, and honestly, it's probably still pretty good for it. In this waning phase, the Picatrix mentions in Book 1, Chapter 4, the only malefic or protective quality of Alnathra is expelling mice and bugs, i.e. driving away pests. The mansion's image is an eagle with the head of a man, and the spirit is Amnadiel. CET Time Zone has two elections in the 8th lunar mansion. The first of the two elections occurs around 2 a.m. when the moon conjoins the ascendant in Cancer while trying Saturn in Pisces. The second takes place just before 10 a.m. with the moon on the midheaven and trying Saturn. Saturn's retrograde, so this isn't ideal for a victory talisman, but the watery alignment between Pisces and Cancer has some synergy, and I think the restrictive nature of Saturn is particularly well suited for driving away pests. Finally, the 17th has the best election of the month, with the now waxing moon in the 13th lunar mansion, al Oa for love, sexual potency, abundance, and growth. This is a mansion for carnal love above all, but it's also quite giving when it comes to prosperity and increase. The Picatrix in Book 1, Chapter 4 says that it is for the increase of trade and profits and harvests, good journeys, and to have good from nobles. And Book 4, Chapter 1 says that it is for the unbinding of men who are impotent and to place love between two people. The image of the 13th Lunar Mansion is explicit, a man with an erect phallus desiring to be in the act of love. And the mansion spirit is Jezreel. CET has one election at about 1.40 p.m. on the 17th, when the waxing moon in Virgo conjoins the midheaven and trines Jupiter in Taurus. Jupiter's all about growth and expansion, which pairs perfectly with the abundance of Jezreel in the 13th lunar mansion. Don't act like you're not impressed. Despite the waning moon, I'm always excited for an election in the seventh lunar mansion, which is kind of an all-purpose, good-for-everything mansion, so long as what you're trying to accomplish is appropriately righteous in nature, it has essentially no malefic qualities, and therefore is usable under a waning moon for benefic purposes. The Picatrix says that it's good for the acquisition of good things, and specifically increasing merchandise, profit, and crops, traveling safely, causing friendship, expelling flies, destroying officials, and causing kings and lords to be beneficial. The mansion's image is a man clothed in robes with his hands extended to heaven as if praying, and its spirit is Shaliel. There are two elections in AET on the 12th of the month. The first takes place at a very early 2.45 a.m., when the waning moon conjoins the ascendant in Gemini and trines Saturn in Pisces and sextiles the ravenous north node. Gemini is ruled by Mercury, who is well positioned in their domicile and exaltation, further boosting this talisman beyond the mild effects of a typical sextile and the good luck of its owner along the way. Saturn's only so much help while retrograde, but will add some structure and potentially slow down the process to ensure that you get it right. The second election takes place at about 8 a.m. with the moon on the midheaven while trying Saturn, making the first of the two noticeably better, though much earlier. The next day on the 13th, the moon moves into the 8th lunar mansion, Alnathra, normally good for victory, and honestly, it's probably still pretty good for it. In this waning phase, the Picatrix mentions in Book 1, Chapter 4, the only malefic or protective quality for Alnathra the expelling of mice and bugs, i.e. driving away pests. The mansion's image is an eagle with the head of a man, and the spirit is Amnadiel. 
AET time zone has one election in the 8th lunar mansion around 3.30 a.m. when the moon conjoins the ascendant in Cancer while sextile Jupiter in Taurus and Mercury in Virgo. Even with the waning moon, this is a pretty good fit for a prosperity talisman with the benefic aspects to both Mercury and Jupiter. The 18th has the best election of the month, with the now waxing moon in the 13th lunar mansion, Al-Awa, for love, sexual potency, abundance, and growth. This is a mansion for carnal love above all, but it's also quite giving when it comes to prosperity and increase. The Picatrix in Book 1, Chapter 4 says it is for the increase of trade and profit and harvests, good journeys, and to have good from nobles. And Book 4, Chapter 9 says that it is for the unbinding of men who are impotent and to place love between two people. The image of the 13th lunar mansion is explicit, a man with an erect phallus desiring to be in the act of love, and the mansion spirit is Jezariel. AET has two elections in the 13th lunar mansion, the first of which takes place around 6.50 a.m. and features the moon in Virgo trine Jupiter and Taurus, and the second at 12.45 p.m. with the moon conjunct the midheaven and Mercury as well as trine Jupiter. Mercury rules luck, and Jupiter is all about growth and expansion, which pairs perfectly with the abundance of Jezariel in the 13th mansion. Don't act like you're not impressed. On the 22nd of August, the moon moves into the 17th lunar mansion, al Ikkel, a mansion primarily for protection from thieves, according to Picatrix, Book 4, Chapter 9. But the waxing moon suggests that we aim for less malefic outcomes like strong buildings, strong relationships, and general protection. The mansion's image is a monkey holding his hands above his shoulders, and the spirit is Adriel. The only election in al Ikkel occurs a little after 3.30 p.m. when the waxing moon in Scorpio conjoins the midheaven while trying retrograde Saturn. Saturn's rigorous nature lends a naturally complementary energy to strong buildings and relationships, etc. Finally, on the 23rd, the waxing moon enters al Khalib, the 18th lunar mansion, for taking away fevers and pains of the stomach. Under a waning moon, Kalib is a very protective mansion, but in these conditions it is described more like a healing mansion in Picatrix, Book 4, Chapter 9. The mansion's image is a snake holding its tail above its head, and its spirit is Egibiel. The final election in AET time zone takes place just after 4.20 p.m., with the waxing moon in Scorpio conjunct the midheaven and sextile Mercury, who is ruled by Mars in Virgo, which is in turn ruled by Mercury. All the mercurial synergy here is naturally supportive of the healing powers of this talisman. That wraps up the August 2023 Lunar Mansion Guide. Thanks for watching, and I hope you get to work at least one of these mansions, particularly the 13th Lunar Mansion if you can, which is going to be really good. As always, links to this presentation and all my notes on August selections, as well as a variety of helpful quick start guides to Lunar Mansion rituals can be found in the description below the video. If you're new to Lunar Mansions, start with the posts where the moon rests on postmogulism.com. That link is down below as well. And then watch my video, How to Perform a Lunar Mansion Ritual, and that should get you started. Before you leave, please take a minute to click like on this video and to subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to visit my website, www.postmogulism.com, and think about subscribing there so that you don't miss all of my content, videos, podcasts, articles, and the other things that I'm making. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.